Hello, good morning, everybody. Uh, before um, presenting the IP uh, policy of IMI, I will uh, present some uh, information on the IMI funding rules. So, uh, concerning uh, the IMI funding rules, um, as mentioned by Michel Goldman before, any party uh, interested in IMI and carrying out activity in line with the IMI objective and established in a member state or in a country associated to the same framework program may participate to an IMI project. And at the first uh, stage, we need at least two entity established in a member state or in an associated country. But also, as mentioned before, not of all these legal entities are entitled to receive IMI funding. So who are these entities entitled to receive IMI funding? These entities are the academic participants, including a second and higher education establishment, also patient organization, non-for-profit research organization, uh, and intergovernmental organization. But in addition to this entity eligible to receive IMI funding, of course, other entity may participate, and, and especially at the second stage, it's a public-private partnership, so will not be eligible to receive IMI funding, the FPI company, the pharmaceutical company, but also the regulatory agency, and as any other entity who would like to participate in an IMI project. It may be an IT company, an imaging company, or any other type of legal entities. So, when we are talking about finance, to which cost are we, referring, we are, are we referring to? We are referring to direct cost and indirect cost. Among these direct cost and indirect cost, they may be spent across research activity, management activity, and training activity. These direct costs may be personal costs allocated to a project. This may be also the travel and subsistence cost the, of the personnel allocated to the project. It may be equipment, consumables, but also subcontracting costs and the cost incurred to provide the different certificate, the cost certificate or certificate for a methodology. But it may also include the conference fees. Concerning the indirect costs, it refers to the support costs of an administrative, logistical, and technical nature of um, the uh, participant activities. And all these rules, this uh, category of costs, direct and indirect costs, apply to all companies. We don't care if these companies are eligible or not to receive IMI funding. So this principle applies equally, equally to all participants. So concerning the indirect costs, you are probably aware of uh, the various di discussion which took place in the previous months concerning the method of calculation of this indirect cost. For the time being, in IMI project, we have only one methodology, which consists of a flat rate of 20% of the direct eligible cost, excluding the subcontracting cost and the cost for the resources made available by a third party. But following further discussion with our two funding members, but also with our stakeholders towards the SRG representative, it has been also discussed the possibility to modify this methodology or ex without uh, speaking a modification, but by en enlarging uh, the methodology for calculating the, this indirect cost. So now the Commission has clearly expressed its position to also use the actual indirect cost. This is clearly in line with its current position to allow participants to use their normal accounting system. And this uh, has been uh, clearly approved by the last Competitiveness Council, encouraging the Commission to allow the participant to use, but also to develop the proper accounting system and at the end to allow them to charge the actual indirect cost. So for the time being, this has not been already approved by our two funding members, so through our governing board, but this should, a decision should be taken by the end of the year. That is the reason why it is really important when you will prepare your expression of interest to already take into consideration this second approach. 
So concerning the type of eligible costs, in order to be charged to a project, a cost shall be actual. It has to be incurred by the beneficiary who is participating to the project. It has also to be recorded it's in, in its accounting system. It has also to be certificated by an external auditor, and it has also to be auditable. So all these conditions are necessary for a cost to be considered as eligible. And concerning, because we have criteria for eligible costs, of course we have also criteria for non-eligible costs, because some of these costs, even if they have been incurred by the participant with the purpose to achieve the objective of a, an IMI project, some of these costs cannot be considered as eligible. And one of the most important among these costs are the um, tax, like the VAT. It's really important to keep in mind, if you are participating in other community programs, you are fully aware of this list of eligible costs, and the same principle apply in IMI project. So we have, uh, as in other uh, community or public programs, some limit for funding research activity, management activity, and training activities. Concerning the research activity, the limit is 75% of the cost of the eligible cost incurred by a participant, and concerning the management and the training activity, it may be 100% of the eligible cost incurred by a participant. We have no distinction between the management and the training. Uh, cost and no differentiation between different type of participants. So, but here we have talked about the participant eligible uh, to receive IMI funding. It, al it is also of your interest to understand how it works for the pharmaceutical company who are participating to the IMI project and who have defined uh, the core topic. So for this uh, pharmaceutical company, they will contribute to IMI through an in-kind contribution and for assessing this is kind contribution, a methodology has been also set up. So the objective is to use the normal accounting system and principle of each of these companies, and they will be able to charge actual cost or average FTE. It will, be, it will depend on how it works internally. We will clearly use uh, the accounting system of each of these companies, but it will have to be justified and explained. And also concerning uh, this company, it's important for the FPR company to consider only costs incurred in Europe. We had already a lot of discussion and we still have probably discussion on this, but costs incurred outside Europe cannot be considered in the calculation of the in-kind contribution. 